Hi, I'm Steve King. And I'm Johnny Putman. We're at Space in Evanston. And we're going backstage for a conversation with the Cashbox Kings. And we're backstage at Space with Joe Nosek and Oscar Wilson of the Cashbox Kings, who just finished putting on a terrific show. Yeah, wow. awesome. We yep. were knocked Thank out. You. Really? The whole crowd was knocked out, too. In Thank fact, you. the best compliment I can give you, I've got 10 years on you, Oscar, and I've got about 31 years on you, Joe, <laughs> and I grew up on the south side of Chicago, and I used to listen to people like Sam Evans, who would, well, he, he said, I'm going down in the basement, getting out the orange crate, turning on the blue light, and I mean, he would go deep into Jimmy Reed. Yeah. And the music that I heard you guys playing tonight, and the music that is on your new album, it makes me think that I'm back in those days, here and that. And I say that because some performers, they'll do what I call a sha -na, na approach to music. A lampoon. <laughs> a lampoon. Yeah. You guys aren't doing the lampoon. You're doing the real thing. How did that happen? Well, I think we came from it we share a similar passion for this music and a love for it. But we came from, I think, two different places. From the suburbs in the city, yeah. right? It's in my bones. I was yeah. born with it. Yeah, yeah. His dad was a blues man. And Tell him who you grew up around. Yeah. Honey Boy Edwards, and Junior Wells, Big Smoke Smothers, Lil Max Simmons, uh, who else to come to the... Elmore. Elmore James. Wow. Uh, and <clears throat> probably a few more. I was just young, too young to know who a lot yeah. of them were. Yeah. But uh, my mother used to have these fish fries, and my father played uh, 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 blues too. But he passed away two months before I was born in 1953. But uh, my mother would always cook, and some of the guys would come by, and my sister ended up uh, having a son by Big Smoky Smothers. You know, and they would all come by and just sit down. That's before they amplified everything and mm -hmm. just play. And as a little kid, I would just be standing there watching them. You know, rather than playing with the other kids, I was always interested in the blues. Mm -hmm. You know, people would be, it would be like, little boy, how you know all of that? But I, you know, my father must have just gave it to me some kind mm -hmm. of way. You know, and uh, I didn't get a real chance to actually come into this about 10 years ago. That's right, because Joe, you started the Cashbox right, Kings yeah. 16 years ago in yep. 01, yep. and then Oscar joined you 10 years ago. Yep. Right. So y you were puttering around between here and Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, right? right? Yeah, I, I um, my formative years were down here, mm -hmm. well, in the suburbs. <laughs> but I used to sneak into the city and, and sneak into clubs in my teens and see yeah. guys like Jimmy Rogers and. Junior Wells and James Cotton, mm -hmm. and that just you know blew me away. And wow. I I would go to the Chicago Blues Fest every year. I think starting about age fourteen, I'd take the train down, and I'd catch every note from the start to finish every day. And I got to see you know the originators of this sure. music, and and you know listening to the radio in Chicago growing up, there there's still a lot of blues shows you could listen yeah. to. Yeah. And uh, it blew me away. And you know my dad, as close as my dad got to blues, is you know they go to Maxwell Street every Saturday, but that was to get <laughs> sure. a bowl of sausage, <laughs> right, and shop. a pair of shoes, or some <laughs> pair of pants for school. And I said, Dad, you probably saw like Little Walter and Robert Knight. I said, well, I don't know, a bunch of little black guys. I didn't know who they were. <laughs> but um. But you know, I, I you know, at, at a young age, this, this music hit me, and I said, "Wow, you know, I gotta learn how to how to play this." But it it must be a pinch me moment for a kid who grew up idolizing the likes of, of James Cotton, and yeah. then you play the harp, and you're so good, and people go, "Man, I hear a lot of cotton in you." Yeah. That's, That's why that. I call him White Cotton. <laughs> I know, I love that. Yeah. When when did it go from liking it to realizing, yeah, I can do this? I can do this. I don't know. You know, I would go. I would sneak into clubs like Buddy Guys, and then I'd say, "Man, if someday maybe I could get up on stage or something for a blues jam." And, and I, I guess I just kept at it. And I got lucky because in high school I wanted to play sports and be in band. And the band director called me one weekend and he said, "Well, you know, we need you. We're doing a car wash on Saturday in Kankakee, and another car wash in I don't know Elmwood Park or something." I said, "Well, I got you know, I got games." He said, "Games." You can't play sports and be in band, and so I said, "Well, I, well, I, I gotta 
you know, I got to play sports, so I guess I'm going to do music on my own. Oh. And I picked up guitar and harmonica then and kind of taught myself. And then I started hearing the blues. And I thought, why? Well, man, I got to figure out how to do this. And then, you know, slowly but surely, and I just kept at it. A lot of hours in the basement, a lot mm -hmm. of hours playing, uh, trying to mimic what I heard, little Walter playing on records. And, and slowly but surely, you know, you get good enough where you're not going to make a fool out of yourself on stage. And then you start making connections with some older musicians. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the great tradition in blues, one of the great things about it is that, and we do it to this day, that if there's a young kid that shows an interest and a passion for it, you let him get up on stage. Mm -hmm. You give him enough rope just to hang himself. <laughs> you know, but, uh, um, you know, and then, you know, and then you little by little, and that's kind of how it happened until I got to the point where I said, you know, man, I, oh, I, I'm getting a little better and some uh -huh. people, and then I, I ran into Kenny Smith and some other like-minded guys my age, and we thought, and talking to Kenny Smith, whose dad is Willie Big Eye Smith, and Kenny, you know, said, you know, it'd be really nice to have a band guys our age because I play this music but it's always with my dad and his friends and they're all like 70s like the young yeah. guy yeah. and a lot more in their 80s 90s and he said man it'd be cool to like get a bunch of young guys our age together and that's yeah. kind of how it started and slowly but surely we made our way up the ladder and and this is a huge year for you because after all these years you've signed with Alligator Records yeah. how cool is that yeah it's pretty awesome I think if you told me as a kid that I would have signed with Alligator I would have you know, drop that of a heart attack. Yeah. Because I think, you know, those Hound Dog Taylor records and mm -hmm. Big Walter and, you know, so those are some of my favorite records. And, you know, as a kid listening to, you know, obviously this Chess and, mm -hmm. and you know, VJ and those, but then later on, you know, Blind Pig and Alligator kind of picked up that mantle. And, right. and uh, you know, we were, on, we, were on, we were on Blind Pig, which was a great yeah. run and then you know they kind of got bought up and it was time to find a new home and wow here we are we're with Bruce and Alligator and I'm really appreciative of Bruce for putting out a old school Chicago blues mm -hmm. record in 2017 and having the faith in that and then also yeah. you know he didn't filter us or or censor any of the kind of the political and social statements that we right. try to make with this record as well I mean, it's about the music but we wanted we we felt that we needed to say these things. And, and isn't that one of the cool things about being with Alligator? Because you've got a guy who's the label head who isn't just a businessman. He has a passion for this kind of music. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, he told me, he said, you know, I said, Bruce, I don't know if, you know, this record might be too traditional old school. And he said, are you kidding me? I could listen to old school blues all day long and I'd yeah. never get tired of it. And I love these, like, this is the music that got me the Howlin' Wolf and Muddy and Hound Dog and, and Hubert Sumlin, these are my, and Cotton, these are my, my idols. And, and so to be with someone who has that same passion but also has a record label mm -hmm. who can help us get this music out to the masses, uh, was a, it was a really uh, fortuitous connection that we were able but to make. As you said, it is old school, but you do talk about issues that are important today and you weren't stopped from talking about gun violence and talking about the dangers of Facebook or build that <laughs> wall. And I mean, some really powerful messages there, but they mm -hmm. come to you in such a way that you, before you know it, you go, oh, wait a minute, I, I've just been taken to church. <laughs> and, uh, and I gotta say, there are moments like the Facebook song, which is really funny, but I look at you and you look so happy on stage, Oscar. <laughs> you inject joy in the blues, which is so cool. Well, I am happy, I mean. You're happy to be on stage. Yes, I mean, that, that is always, you know, music, I mean, I was in the high school band. I guess I couldn't play sports. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had some pretty famous brothers that come up around there boxing. Uh, one of my brothers was even in the major leagues for a while. And, and anyway, and one of my brothers was like a playground legend, basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, I couldn't play none of that. And I couldn't see very well, so I'd always get a hold to some. I can play a little guitar. I got a Roy Rogers guitar <laughs> one time. And, you know, and... I just made it say something, you know. I'm not very good at it still, but he can play any instrument really well. I can really play, well. and he you know, enough it. to just get what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. But uh, you know, but when I was in high school, and uh, I had a couple scholarships uh, to play a baritone horn and 
trombone for Florida State, Grambling State, and uh, uh, Knoxville. But I came home one day. My mother, well, she couldn't read or write, actually. But I came home one day, and she said, you're going to DeVry. You need a trade. So I was going to be a television repairman. Oh. You know, and she didn't understand the concept of scholarship. All she knew is she didn't have the money yeah. mm -hmm. for me to go nowhere. So, and then uh, I had my first son, and then the second, and then the third, the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, the seventh, eighth, ninth, and oh. so forth and so on. And so uh, my wife got cancer, and she passed away in 2005. I moved to Wisconsin. Uh, to a little town called Janesville. I wasn't trying to move there. I was trying to move to Madison with my older sons, but it, we just, the last house that the lady showed me was like my dream house, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know? And I had two girls left at home. So after they graduated, they went back to Chicago and left me. So one day I went to the BFW and I met Cashbox King's guitar player, Travis Coopman. And uh, we hit it off, and he said, I said, well, you know, I, I sing. He said, I'm Travis Cooper, the Cashbox King. I said, I'm Oscar Wilson. I sing a little blues, play a little harmonica. He said, well, you want to come up? I mean, like, yeah. And we hit it right off, and then he introduced me. And he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, man, I'd like to play a buddy guys. And he said, I right, give me two weeks, and you want to talk to them. And what was that, December 15th, I think it was, I, we played. I play Buddy Gas. So Travis calls me up and says, I got I met this guy, he's awesome. We gotta let him come sing with us sometime. I said, sure. He said, Well he's gonna sing at Buddy Guys next Friday. <laughs> I said, whoa, whoa, wait a second, I wanna meet this guy. He said, No, no, don't worry. Don't worry. So Oscar shows up in a three piece suit and a hat and uh, I shook his hand and I said, Well you looked the part <laughs> and uh, what are you gonna sing? And he said, I'll sing this by Muddy Waters, a couple of songs. And he, I think he sang three songs and got three standing ovations. Uh, and yeah, that joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that just uh, radiated off of him mm -hmm. and the, and the crowd felt it mm -hmm. and uh, he was having fun up there and people want not only to be entertained but they want to see people having fun yeah. and it and it 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 reciprocates Absolutely. back and forth yeah. and I said all right this guy's all right uh, no he did <laughs> <laughs> well what it took a couple more days. well I mean it took a while you know because I mean you know a new person come in mm -hmm. and you know, you used to lead singing all the time, you know, and it get fed in. But we become the best of friends. Yeah. You know, through it all. You know, old man, young buck. You know, I have to slow him down sometime. But you know, but honestly, I couldn't ask for a better friend. Well, not just enjoying the music and and liking to play together. Was there a point where you realized that there was a chemistry? when you guys were on stage together because oh, yeah. boy that was evident tonight oh yeah it's 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 been one but like he said we're like old married couple mm -hmm. you know we have our days you know and and uh i'll just leave me alone mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and uh, uh and then a few minutes later you know i just, you know like i say see what people don't realize sometimes maybe is you wrong but if you can get away from it for a few minutes and calm down, then you can think that maybe I, maybe that was my fault. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I, if I confront, I move away for a minute because I might be the cause of this problem here. Remember that, Steve. You know? Well, I think that's the thing I don't think people realize is you guys know you've been together a long time. It's hard enough to be married to someone try being in a band which basically means you're married to five people at once right yeah. right. and and I don't have to take many cross-country trips with my wife in a van mm -hmm. um thank I uh, know I love my wife and I'm sure we, we would have fun but after a certain while no matter how much you love someone you know you you can get on each other's nerves but I think that's the true test of friendship and a, and a good bandmate that no matter what you have your moments but then you know I, I knew after a while I said you know this guy I know who I am, I know where I come from. I'm not gonna ever go up on stage and try to sing a Muddy Water song or a Hollow Wolf song. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I know my place. I, The music I write, I try to, music that I sing, I try to do something that I'm comfortable singing. Mm -hmm. And I try to draw on some of the other 
styles of American roots music like rockabilly and country that I'm a little more comfortable with and infuse that at what we're, what we're doing. But when we write things together, I'll write a Stone Cold Blue song knowing that I got this guy here to sing mm-hmm. it and sing it right. And so to be in a band with him, a guy who comes from this, to me, almost mythic time and place, uh, South Side of Chicago with all these people that I idolize and who can sing it so naturally. I mean, it's in his bones. Uh, it's like a thrill to me. But that's why you had me uh, sing uh, Don't Mess Around With Jim. Yeah. <laughs> was that uh, satire? No, it was not satire. <laughs> <laughs> but see, we give each other a hard time, but he... We, we we cover the, the Jim Croce song Don't Mess Around With Jim yeah. and so he'll give him this guy made me cover this song it's crazy and I say Oscar I never heard this song I wasn't even born when it came out you were the first guy you got a guitar one day and played it for me I said well that sounded cool we should do that mm-hmm. so I take no blame for that but that but that's all part of the banner and I, I think now you know I, I have to say that the guitar player that he was talking about Travis Coopman the, was the original one of the other founding members and he and I had a very special chemistry together. And that's why I wasn't so sure when this guy stepped in. I thought, mm-hmm. you know, we can, this is you know, kind of me and him. Uh, but then shortly after Oscar joined the band, Travis um, had to leave the band for health reasons. And I thought, man, what am I going to do? You know, mm-hmm. this is my, my buddy. This is my kind of my safety net. And uh, for a while, I honestly thought maybe I should just go back to my, just doing my day job and, and being a family man. And, but I, I knew there was something with Oscar that I still hadn't totally tapped into, and I'm glad that I wrote it out because uh, it's been a good ride, mm-hmm. and I think we got a lot of miles to go yet. And you got this great album to show for it too. And let me just say that kudos. She wasn't here tonight, your your piano player. Yeah. But there's a woman in the band, yeah. which is very cool, yeah. and awesome. she had big shoes to fill. Yeah. Yeah. She's stepping in for Barrel House Chuck, yeah. who we yeah. lost only in his 50s yeah. just yeah. last year. Yeah. I mean that is an enormous task, but on this album, she she cooks. was uh, she was so absolutely amazing. Yeah. Lee kind of hero. She's in Tokyo now. She's in Tokyo. Yeah. She lives in Tokyo. But the first time I met her too, a very similar kind of Oscar Wilson like story. Kenny Speedy Eye Smith, our drummer, called me up and he said, "Hey, uh, I got someone I want to play piano with us." I said, "Well, okay. Uh, I trust your judgment. Uh-huh. You know, you're you know what you're talking about." So we show up to this gig and. He said I wanted to play Buddy Guys of all places, again. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this this young Japanese girl comes and like very demurely introduced herself to me. Oh. And I said, "This is the piano player." <laughs> he said, "Just wait." So we got up on stage, and I said, "Well, uh, do you want me to tell you the song?" She said, no, just tell me the key. I said, "Okay." Well, she got up there and she just started banging like Sunnyland Slam or Otis Fan. I couldn't believe it. Wow. And um, you know, she idolized Chuck. She's I think. You know, Chuck is one of her all-time favorite piano players and was, you know, really kind of worshipped Chuck and would come and, and go to shows when she would come to Chicago every year. And uh, when, uh, you know, when Chuck passed away way too young, you know, we said, I really wanted him to play on this album, but he was just physically too ill to, to, to play on it. And uh, so the, the person who came to mind immediately <coughs> was Lee because I knew how much... We liked playing with her and how much she idolized Chuck, and she took it very seriously. And mm-hmm. I think the thing that's great about her, and, and this is kind of an alligator connection, but she uh, got to meet Bruce Iglauer a couple months ago when she was in town, and she said, I really want to meet Bruce because I've always been very indebted to something that he said, and I really appreciate him. She said, I, I saw the alligator documentary film. And Bruce was talking about Katie Webster, Two-Fisted Mama, one of the great mm-hmm. piano players that she recorded on Alligator. And the interviewer had said, oh, isn't she an amazing uh, female piano player? And Bruce said, no, she's not an amazing female piano player. She's an amazing piano player. Yeah. And Lee said that meant, as a young girl in her 20s, a lot to her because mm-hmm. she felt she was often judged as, oh, you're a girl or a chick mm-hmm, mm-hmm. playing. And... Uh, She's the first cash box queen. <laughs> but she it. fits right in with yeah. us and yeah. and we love playing with her and uh yes, indeed. and she's a, f- a phenomenal human being and uh 
we're, 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 we're glad to have a, a rose amongst the thorns. Guy. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I have to ask you about the recording of the album mm. because every track has the sound of a live recording. Mm -hmm. Were they recorded live? Yeah. If, if not, boy, you yeah. faked it like crazy. No, it was live. It was a live recording live in the studio well, you know, in one room. Everything that uh, I personally do uh, it more or less have to be because uh, I learned uh, something from uh, a guy who taught Lil Milton how to play, Mr. James Peterson, down in Leland, Mississippi. And I was his uh, son-in-law for a while, and uh, he would always sit out and play, and I'd try to, you know, catch something from him. And then I said, man, you, that ain't the way you played it the last time. He said, I didn't feel like this the last time. Uh -huh. You know, and and this before I even got in the game, you know. I'm like, mm -hmm. what do you mean by he didn't feel like that? So once I got in, now I understand because I'm not a verbatim guy. You know, I can't get up and sing the same song, and we're going to sing the same songs tomorrow. I can't sing them the same way. I mean, I feel that way tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's the thing about what makes blues so excited. And then when we record, my best is uh, 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 maybe the first or second take. Mm -hmm. If I go too many times, now I'm going off. I, I'm, my best shots. I ain't gonna improve too much, <laughs> <laughs> because cause then I'll start changing. My mindset will start. Don't yeah. think too much. Yeah, That's right. I'll start to change things, and you know, and you know, I when I'm doing a song, I try to go to sleep, and if I can get it in my in my head, in my you know, while I'm asleep, then okay, yeah, now I got it. It's fixated. Okay, now I'm gonna go record it. But I may write some of the stuff. He'll tell you, I'll forget when I go on stage. I'm just getting old. I mean, you know. <laughs> but and sometimes I can roll through it. Yeah. You know? But those albums tell us they're really important to do them live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just uh, in the moment, it. very organically, and you know, no studio gimmick gimmicks. And we just we go in there and we sit in the same room. <laughs> we play it live, and and whatever comes out at the time, and. and <coughs> I know Excuse labels me. probably don't want us to publicize all that much because they like people to think that we slave over these things. <laughs> but we, you know, we try not to think too much. We try to go in, get loose, take one or two or three takes at the most, and move on. And eat some and barbecue. Eat some barbecue. <laughs> That's, That's right. very important. We're yes. always. Well, I always make sure that Good the group food. is well fed with yeah. plenty of barbecue <laughs> when we record and. That's that's what happens. I can't believe we're talking about this new album on Alligator Records. We didn't even bring one with us to hold up oh, and show man. folks. So, so uh, blatant plug, uh, the name of the album is? Royal Mint <coughs> on Alligator Records. <coughs> the cover is great. The liner <coughs> notes. It's the, it's the whole package. Yeah. It really is. And people can get it at the Cashbox Kings website. Yeah, if you, if you go to <coughs> um, <Excuse> cashboxkings.com, <coughs> www.cashboxkings.com, you'll land right on the site. You can go into the site or you can buy the record. Right. And if you go into our site uh, on the music page, you can listen and, and stream the entire album. But we hope that um, people out there in, in this age of digital piracy yes. and free mm. downloads Buy it. Uh, help us struggling musicians and because it costs money to put out a record yeah. and it costs money out of musicians pockets and great labels these days are dropping like flies yeah. labels that have been around for 30 40 50 years because of the the whole i would say not so uh, positive changes that have taken place in the music yeah. industry with the whole digital revolution and so um you know we we'd love to have people buy the record but if you want to stream it or do what you have to but you know come see us live as well I do mean, yourself a favor and come that's and see where these. It's at. yeah come yeah. see these guys perform live and uh, in closing i'd say that one of the other things that was so impressive is <coughs> it's, it's like you guys check your egos at the door and you got to have some ego to go out on stage but everybody gets a chance to step up in the spotlight. So you can hear Billy on guitar, yeah. awesome guitar oh, player, yeah. awesome One of the performers. Best. We miss Joel Patterson, our yep, buddy Joel. Yep, I know. He's going to be at Fitzgerald tomorrow night, so yeah. come on down to Fitzgerald's. But, but we'll say hi to Joel because I know he's a big fan of you guys. And, loves and, you and guys. again, people, if, if you just want to feel good and if you want to just stop and appreciate music that you, you just don't get to hear enough of today, come out yeah. and see the Cashbox Kings. Yes, indeed. <laughs> 
And bring plenty of ginger beer. It's <laughs> <laughs> Oscar. There ain't no telling what you might get sure. me to sing. Man. <laughs> well, thank you, Oscar Wilson. It's an honor to see you perform and to just spend some some time with you and pick your brain. We could go on forever. Thank you. Good. This thank has you been so fun, much. guys. Thank thanks you so much, Johnny. We really appreciate thank it. Joe, thanks for, for making see? the Cashbox Kings happen. Hey, thanks. Sixteen you know, years ago. Thanks for coming out and supporting us because we'd be I'd be playing in my. And uh, my, my living room. Actually, I'm done talking. I've had enough of him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my, fe my, my feelings, my <laughs> sentiments exactly. Thanks, Steve and Johnny. We appreciate thank you. you guys. Hey, thank you. Night. Thanks a lot. All right. Say hell yeah. Hey. Oh, all right. Yeah. I got some sad news for you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Yeah, that's the blues, ain't it? <laughs> but I don't know. Every time I try to get ready to go out and have a nice evening, something messes it up. Right now, it's my woman. She's done it to me again. <laughs> Every time I get ready to leave, she mentions a certain person's name. I ain't gonna call a uh, name up here, but the initials is Joe Nosek. <laughs> and she always talking about Joe this, Joe that, Joe this, this. So I got this song. We did this song on the album, and I thought about that when we were doing this song. And I was coming here today. See if you like this. <laughs>
Mr. Joe Nelson, y'all. Can't you hear how the thunder roll? 